The residence program is just essential to who we are. It is the McGaw YMCA. My, my life just spiraled out, out of control for me. But at that point in time, I was able to move into the YMCA. So slowly my life started getting back on track. Living there and working there became a big convenience for me. It's been a really good good experience for me. Uh, we've had people come in and just didn't see no end to how they were gonna change things in their life. And they come to the Y and then they survive. They have heartbreaking stories and they have wonderful stories. The Y is their home. It's not a room. It's their home. Tom had worked at the Y for several years and died unexpectedly and left his retirement fund to the McGaw YMCA. So it is home. It's belonging. Who knows? Who knows where I would have landed? Uh, they helped turn me around, and, and I truly appreciate the uh, great opportunity they gave me, and then they still continue to give me. I got at least 20 more years ago to retire from this place, so I'm in it for the long haul. <laughs> Brilliant Teen has been around for, I think, 59 years or something like that. My wife and I were in the second show, which was called Too Many Girls. Probably one of the most rewarding things for me about Brilliant Teen is the fact that there's no cuts. There are kids who've been in this show who were definitely never thought they had any talent until they walked in the door. They probably even didn't sing in the shower and blossomed during Brilliant Teen, and not just the kids on stage, but also some of the kids off stage. The kids on showboard get a unique leadership training ability too, because they have to manage their peers. All the business aspects, all of the props, and all of the backstage and behind the scenes functions are, are run by the kids with adults that, that are there to guide them and, and, and help them. We take a show written for maybe 30 people, and we expand it to 165. Every kid gets to be in the front row at some point so that they have their moment to shine. And I auditioned for The Brilliant Teen Show and got the lead as Fiona. And I had no experience whatsoever reading dialogue or singing solos on stage. I did uh, have the opportunity to be the lead in uh, Little Mary Sunshine as a senior. I was Big Jim Warrington. I was tied to a tree and Big Jim Warrington was coming to save me and he whispered, I just had a double whopper with extra onions and then proceeded to sing in my face. Brilliantine made me laugh, made me smile, made me enjoy him just that much more by seeing another side of what he was interested in in our community too. And I remember my mom coming two nights before opening and she went home and stayed up the next 48 hours and made two of the most beautiful costumes for the show and then looked at me and said, you really can sing. I get misty-eyed every year at the finale when all the kids come out. Some of those kids who we cast in a part, and it was a stretch for them, they gave it their all and succeeded. I had the YMCA not only encouraging me in what turned out to be my profession, but also developing me as a person in an atmosphere where everyone was so incredibly loving and positive. Some of the happiest moments of my life is brilliant. For, I believe it was a total of <laughs> nine straight years, uh, I was involved in either Indian Guides or Indian Princesses. I was the nation chief several times. My name was Lone Mustang. And you would make moccasins or the vests. And we would go on weekend camping trips to various Y campsites around northern Illinois. And it was a lot of fun for a, a five-year-old and his dad. I remember some big bonfires, stories around the campfire, which were mainly uh, life stories. I always do wonder what happened after the kids went to sleep. If I told you, I'd have to kill you. Well, it was primarily a program for dads to spend time with their daughters, and that's what we did while the daughters were awake. And then when the daughters went to bed, then it was time for dads to be dads with other dads. It was always fun, and I was always crippled for a couple of days. And it seemed like several years in a row, it rained. I made some of my best friends there. It was just a great experience. I still see them as, as family to me.
it is great to walk around camp in the fall. The deer come out of hiding. Winter, it's just snow covered and uh, not a human footprint across that peninsula. Spring, we cycle back to the full camp. We've been down to the bus to see them off as they've gone to camp and to see the excitement that they have of meeting old friends, people they've known before. You're going again this year, oh great. The first night you're there, you wouldn't get any sleep because of all of the excitement. I remember flag raising as being a very important time. Many activities at camp have been the same for years. The songs we sing in the dining hall, uh, it's just part of the fun and frivolity of camp. But uh, more than that, they love the feeling, the atmosphere of Camp Echo. And I, I think that kind of love of life and just kind of being yourself and letting your hair down and just enjoying yourself um, is so much a part of the why. A friend of mine many years ago said at camp, we, we care about the things that count. One of my fondest memories uh, was taking Canadian canoe trips. Two weeks straight out, portaging, carrying our backpacks, carrying canoes. It's a great experience. Some of the trips that we took, uh, it was just amazing because you'd be out there for, for 10 days and, and you wouldn't see a soul. I didn't think Evanston kids ever lack confidence, but uh, Canada can challenge you a little bit. All of us had tipped and we actually lost one whole canoe and we were sort of hanging from trees and stuff and got picked up, that was fun. And what an experience for them, the teamwork, uh, team building concept that we instilled. I guess some of them say I gave them confidence that must have been that if I could do it, why well, they were confident they could do it. And you see that cycle continue of uh, campers becoming leaders, becoming counselors, and imparting those values back on a new generation of campers. Lots of generations of family campers have been through here that uh, the grandparents now were here when I was here in the 60s and, and, uh, and then the parents are still coming back. As a parent you look for role models for your children and for my kids it started out as the staff up at Camp Echo and then they kind of grew up to be those role models. And at the closing campfire, we all stand and face the lake. Uh, we yell, echo, and then listen. That triggers uh, the lighting of the burning triangle across the lake. That is the triangle symbol of the YMCA, uh, body, mind, and spirit. The Y's had a huge impact on, on us, and it's a very important part of who we are. Uh, I met so many just good, uh, extraordinary people. He was a very special kid, really special. I can't imagine what it would be like without that group. The Y is responsible for, for my wife. Our day always started with middle school dances. May I have this dance? And she said, Dad, I've met a guy. There was a kiss scene, so I guess that's what did it. We are one of many Camp Echo romances that blossomed. Later on, we married. We participated at each other's weddings. He was my best man, and I was an usher at his wedding. So I sort of growing up with the, the Evanston YMCA as well as have my children, and now my grandchildren. And uh, that love keeps on giving it, and what a great part of our life. It's loving support loving encouragement, loving patience. The Magal YMCA is the way the world should be. Lots of heroes in the Y. Just some of the best people on this planet who can do the best things for this world. You can't find words many times when you, when you come together with a group and you have a same feeling of We'll never forget this. My, this has been wonderful. <laughs>